Oh, dear child. Huh. I know I've got to have it here somewhere. Got so much to do. Huh. Oh, hi. Apparently, Harmony isn't ready yet. Uh, can someone please go get her? Uh, I can't look all this good by myself. Hey everyone, this is TJ, aka Harmony Breeze, your current reigning Miss Wisconsin Unlimited at Large 2010. I want to welcome you guys to a very special evening because what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some insight backstage on what it takes for me to get ready for a show, an average night out, or even a pageant. Welcome back everyone, and as you can see, I'm clean shaven, lost the spectacles, and I'm ready to put on a face. So first thing that we're going to do is get rid of these eyebrows. Harmony doesn't have these eyebrows. She has thin, much higher eyebrows. I'm gonna take a little amount on the end of a brush here, and I'm gonna apply it to smooth over the entire eyebrow. The goal is to get it as smooth as humanly possible, so when you apply your foundation, you're not going to see your real eyebrow underneath. So I've applied it to both eyebrows. I'm gonna take a blow dryer. If yours has a cool shot button on it, Cool air is gonna work the best because you're already warm, I guarantee it. So I'm just gonna dry these until the glue is completely clear while patting the glue smooth. So next, once those are dry, your next goal is to obviously cover your entire face with foundation. I generally pick a shade that's slightly darker than my skin tone because with all the highlighting and contouring, you're gonna, it's gonna lighten it up and you're gonna get a real nice matte finish. Alright, so I'm going to take the foundation stick. I prefer to use a pan stick. Um, it does come in round containers. This is easier to apply. So I'm going to apply it to my entire face. Just to blend this over your entire face. So what I'm going to do is I want to start with my eye makeup. What you want to do is take some of your highlight powder, which I use Ben Nye's Clown White. I'm going to take this Clown White powder and I'm gonna put it right under my eyes where I put the highlight foundation. What this is gonna do, you can put it pretty heavily. It's gonna catch any droppings from the eyeshadow that you put on and prevent it from leaving marks in your foundation. Because what you're gonna do is if anything drops, you can just brush it right off and you're left with a perfectly clean slate. So the crease here, I need to recreate that crease higher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my small angled brush, some black, just black grease eye makeup, this is Joe Blasco brand. I use a lot of different brands. Take some on the brush. And I'm gonna recreate that crease in my eye by forming an S shape. So I'm gonna start here at the center towards the bridge of my nose. Bring it up. Sweep it down. And flick it out again. So there you got that S shape. That's gonna be essentially the crease in your eye makeup. Now I'm gonna to wanna to shade it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it wider through the base here. And I'm gonna sweep it around my eyelid so that when my eye is open, this is all gonna be shaded in and it's gonna create the crease illusion in the makeup. Fill that in. This paint, it has a tendency to smudge and smear. So just to set it, small eyeshadow brush, black eyeshadow. Mine always tends to be a little glittery. I was gonna put it right on top of the grease paint. It's gonna set that grease and prevent it from going anywhere. I tend to do pink eyeshadows. You can do whatever color you want, base it off what you're wearing that night, um, your favorite color, it doesn't really matter. Tonight I'm gonna be wearing black and pink, so I'm gonna do black and pink. That right in this portion of the eye here. This is gonna be the color that is gonna be most prominent in your makeup tonight. To finish off this eye, I want to put some white in the center of my eye. I know a lot of uh, 
a lot of entertainers and a lot of women like to put the white in the center. What it does is it opens and brightens up the eye. And if you do it too dark, you can really bring your eyes in real close uh, and give you a really dark, um, angry or evil look. So if you're going for it, do it. I'm going to go back with the same clown white color that I used on my highlight here. I'm going to go in the center of the eye here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do the same thing to this eye that I did to this eye, and then I'll get you guys caught up with the eyebrows. So I'm going to take the same black grease eye makeup to draw my eyebrows on. I'm using a very small angled brush. Can you see it? Very small angled brush to draw my eyebrow on. It takes lots of practice so don't get frustrated. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle the brush down and I'm going to follow the contour of my makeup and draw my eyebrow on. So I'm going to go up, follow the angle of my eye makeup that I've already done. Follow the curve, bring it down, and angle it back. Now the tail, I'll blend that with foundation if it's too long, whatnot. The one thing to remember when you're doing your eyebrow is don't bring it up and bring it back down. You want to bring it up and out because that's going to give you the lifted effect. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and hopefully get it as close as possible to matching. Alright, so as you can see, I now have two eyebrows. Um, eye makeup is there. It's not blended yet. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it set. I'm going to work on the contouring of my cheeks. So I'm going to draw my line from the corner of my ear down to about the crease in my lip here. Then I'm just going to go real lightly along the edge of my board. So as you can see, I added a little bit more highlight to contrast the contouring. Um, forehead, chin, and the bridge of my nose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to blend everything out, shade my hairline in so that my wig line doesn't show, and I will give you guys a final shot. So here we go. So here you have it guys. I'm all ready. Ready for night in the town, ready for a pageant are ready to host this show for you. So without further ado, let's get things going. I am so sorry I'm late. Welcome to The Clothes in My Closet, the show that coordinates the issues addressing Milwaukee's LGBT with the solutions. Let's not skirt the problems. On today's episode, we will be addressing the recent bully crisis facing our, our youth and offering you some safe and healthy alternatives to suicides. We will also be speaking with our co-host, Richie Martin Jr., UMO's Health Promotions Prevention and Intervention Specialist, about an ongoing fight against HIV and AIDS. And Harmony will tell us more of her beauty secrets. But first, on November 4, 2008, California passed an amendment to their state constitution entitled Proposition 8. This proposition amends the state constitution and bans same-sex marriage. This sparked the fuse within the LGBT community. Politically and personally, many people felt silenced by this devastating blow. However, as people are now speaking out and speaking up, there is still hope. On January 31st, 2011, our neighboring state, Illinois, joined five other states in the battleground for equality by passing a civil union law. This law will go into effect June 1st. They're calling it Senate Bill 1716, the Illinois Religious Freedom Protection and Civil Union Act. Other states have taken similar actions, including California, Nevada, New Jersey, Oregon, and Washington. This is the recent trend in a fight that seems to be turning more and more positive every day. Combined with the recent repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, this is definitely a battle, victory in the war for equality. You know, it's funny. According to Wikipedia, only Massachusetts, Connecticut, Iowa, New Hampshire, and Vermont now or will soon allow same-sex couples to marry. However, due to other states' constitutions and laws and the Federal Defense of Marriage Law, these marriages will not be recognized as valid in other states and are not recognized by the federal government. And so may offer couples no more rights than California's domestic partners or other states' civil unions. 
Well, I don't know about you, Harmony, but I believe Shakespeare had it right when he wrote the words, what's in a name that which we call a rose? By any other name would smell as sweet. They might not be a victory in the protesters' minds because we aren't calling it a marriage, but Illinois has done the nation proud by enacting a liberty of equality in any sense. Speaking of equality, bullying has seemed to gain some national attention in the news lately. People from all walks of life are taking great notice to the reports that gay teen suicide is in epidemic proportions due in large to bullying by homophobic adolescents. Hate crimes often go unnoticed and unpunished, but this recent rash of overwhelming evidence suggests that it's time to get a little more proactive in the fight towards freedom of being yourself. The problem seems to be more the lack of reporting rather than the lack of concern. Everyone seems to notice when bullying happens, but do people really know what to do if they witness it? Companies and nonprofit organizations such as the Give a Damn Campaign and the Trevor Project are a great place to turn. If you need any help dealing with any issues you might have, Milwaukee's Pathfinder is another great place to turn. If you are a teen or adolescent, you can report bullying to your teacher, coach, parent, principal, or any adult that you feel safe around. Reporting a bully can feel like you are being a tattletale, but in all honesty, I th think of yourself more as a superhero. Bullies make people feel like they aren't wanted and don't belong. Another place you might feel safe to report bullying is your local LGBT community center. Don't think that adults don't get bullied too, though. Milwaukee's LGBT Center is a great place to go if you would like to find more information on programs throughout the LGBT Center. They have a program known as Project Q, as taken from the website, Project Q is for youth, by youth, development program of the Milwaukee LGBT Community Center. The program serves lesbians, gays, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning and allied youth ages 12 to 24 in the greater Milwaukee area. The program provides opportunities for the development and leadership of these youth in a safe, accessible space. Speaking of Project Q, I know we air March 6th, but we're currently streaming live on the internet. So let's not forget to mention that UWM will be hosting their annual drag ball this Saturday, February 19th, 2011. You can find many of your drag favorites there doing what they do best in hopes of raising funds for Project Q. Your own producer will be there as her alter ego, Bailey St. James. So check it out. Harmony, did you know I was a superhero? Uh, um, Richie? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Ask me anything, girl. Okay. What's the chemical makeup of the HIV drug Truvada? Okay, I give up. I'm not a superhero. But you're on a subject that I know an awful lot about. So, Richie, what is HIV? UMOS, in partnership with Heart Love Place, today joins us as we commemorate this 11th anniversary of National HIV AIDS Awareness Day. As we educate, test, treat, as well as serve the African American community, as well as all other populations, on February 7th, 2011. There are approximately 1.1 million people living with HIV and AIDS in the United States, including more than 500,000 thought of, of African American race. While African Americans represent approximately 13% of the U.S. population, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports that the groups account for more, almost half of the nation's AIDS cases. The Wisconsin Division of Public Health estimates that as many as 41% African American men who have sex with men in Milwaukee are infected with HIV and AIDS. Black females are 15 more times likely to contract HIV than that of the white population. With Sister Galetta from Line of Judah, Pentecostal Ministries, for National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day right here located in the Heart Love Place. Glad I want you to go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and what brings you here to the National HIV AIDS Awareness Day Health Fair. Hi, um, my name is Galetta and I'm a, a student at Springfield College and I'm working on a project and the project that I selected was HIV AIDS and um, wanting to get the more churches, more churches and more faith-based communities and leaders to become involved 
um, with um, educating and um, just you know teaching about the HIV AIDS to their congregation. That's you know that's this is the reason why I'm here. And that was Glenna right here at National HIV AIDS Awareness Day Health Fair. For more information about the health fair or for Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day, you can contact www.blackaidsawarenessday.org. Thank you. So Richie, what is HIV and what's the difference between HIV and AIDS? Well, Harmony, to understand what HIV is, let's break it down. The H stands for human. This particular virus can only affect human beings. The I stands for immune deficiency. HIV weakens your immune system by destroying important cells that fight disease and infection. A deficit immune system cannot protect you. The V stands for virus. A virus can only reproduce itself by taking over a cell in the body of the host. In this case, the affected person, human immune deficiency virus, is a lot like other viruses, including those that cause the flu or the common cold. But there is an important difference. Over time, your immune system can't seem to get rid of it. Scientists are still trying to figure out why this is so. We know that HIV can hide for long periods of time in the cells of your body and that it uh, attacks your key part of your immune system, your T cells or CD4 cells. Your body has to have these cells to fight infections and disease, but HIV invades them, uses them to make more copies of itself, and then destroys them. Over time, HIV can destroy so many of your CD4 cells that your body cannot fight infections or diseases anymore. When that happens, the HIV infection can lead to AIDS. And AIDS is an acquired immune deficiency syndrome. It's a syndrome which appears in the advanced stages of HIV infection. The difference between HIV and AIDS, while AIDS is a medical condition, HIV is sometimes referred to as the consultative agent since it is not possible to develop AIDS without an infection. Although it is possible to be infected with HIV without developing AIDS. Is the test for HIV and AIDS painful at all? There are four easy steps to fighting HIV and AIDS. The test itself is not really painful. 20 minute test, mouth swab, no blood whatsoever. And it usually takes only about 20 minutes. So know your status. And just as importantly, know your partner's status. HIV and AIDS has never gone away. In fact, statistics show that it is on the rise. Richie, what are some ways of fighting HIV or AIDS in our community? Well, we can't save the beloved community until we serve them. We cannot lead the beloved community until we love them. People need to know that we love them and we have their greatest interests at heart. We have to restore hope in America. Had we known what we know 30 years ago, we would be in a much different place in regards to this epidemic. However, we didn't know much back then, as much as we know now, where it came from, who had it, and how to know. We did not know how to take care of someone we loved who was living with it. We didn't know about the four fluids. We didn't know the difference between someone living with HIV and someone having an AIDS diagnosis. But we know so much more now in 2011, 30 years later. We know there are four fluids by which HIV is transmitted blood, semen, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. We know the nation's blood supply is safer today than we ever known before. We know there are a number of treatment options available and that being HIV positive doesn't mean someone is going to die. Here we know for sure HIV is 100% preventable and that abstinence does and will work, as well as being faithful and using a condom each and every time you have sex has worked to prevent HIV. We also know there are still individuals in our beloved community who need to hear the basic HIV and AIDS one-on-one -on -one education messages and learn about the behaviors that put them at risk of and for contracting HIV. We know there is nobody born wanting con to contract HIV or live with AIDS. Somewhere along the way, 
they put themselves at risk, and that is their truth. We can speak another truth to those who have not actually sexually had sex and to those who are still debuting in sex. So now we know what we do we do. Make today that day. Make this time now. That moment you will walk into the truth of loving life so much that you will want to get involved until the cure comes. You don't have to know someone with HIV or AIDS to get involved. For more information regarding HIV and AIDS, statistics, and or to receive your free 20-minute confidential test, please contact UMOS at 414-389-6515 or 414-389-6507 in the Milwaukee area. UMOS is located at 802 West Mitchell Street. Your call is confidential. The test is confidential. So, Harmony, about those beauty secrets. What secrets? Okay, I guess a girl has to keep some secrets to themselves. My lips are sealed with a kiss. So in closing, so in closing, I want to thank you guys for joining us today. It's been a great experience. Richie has provided us with some great information. Is there anywhere else besides the LGBT Community Center in UMOS where they can also get more information on HIV and AIDS prevention? They can also contact www.arcw.org, www.umos.org, or by contacting several other organizations such as www. Black HIV AIDS Day, www.aids.com, uh, okay. or just Google it. Okay, and you had mentioned the ARCW. Can you elaborate a little bit what the ARCW is and what they're there for? ARCW is located in the greater Milwaukee area. Um, they provide prevention services as well, uh, free HIV testing, uh, case management services. They even have a pantry for those that need food and cannot receive food in government or the government assistance. Okay. And the ARCW stands for the AIDS Resource Center of Wisconsin, correct? That is correct. Okay. So there's lots of places to get information on AIDS prevention, um, how to deal with AIDS. If you do contract and you do find out that you have tested positive, um, please seek help. There are plenty of professionals out there that are there more than willing to help you. Um, and help you get through this time because it can be really tough to find out that you've tested positive, correct? It is tough. It is a very tough situation. Okay. Do you find that if there's a, lately in Milwaukee, there's a specific age group that's targeted most? You know, as, as far as like young individuals or older individuals, is it showing up more or less in any specific age group? Actually, there is between the ages of 13 and 24, which is uh, the population that everyone is trying to tackle right now, all the agencies really, really trying to tackle that population. Very so cool. yes, there is. Awesome. So once again, I want to thank you guys for joining us. You can find me all over Milwaukee performing. Um, my partner and I, Milano Breeze, we currently own Glitter Stage Productions and host the drag shows at Mona's Nightclub, Sunday nights. Start at 9 p.m. You can also find Glitter Stage Productions or myself on Facebook for any information. If you have any questions on shows, feel free to hit us up. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys for joining us. It's been a great time, and on behalf of Richie and I, have a blessed day. Bye-bye.